Hello and welcome to lesson four for an inspector course. Um, today's title is Sheila Burling. So if you write that down in your exercise books, underline your title. Um, and once you've done that, I would like you to copy down those quotations in blue. So we have two quotations from the opening stage directions which describe Sheila. The first is a pretty girl and the second is rather excited. Um, and I would like you to choose a keyword um, from one of the quotations or both of the quotations if you're aiming for the higher marks and to zoom in on that keyword to explore its connotations and what it shows you about Sheila's character. So for instance, why has Priestley described her as being pretty? What do we think of or associate with somebody who's pretty? Um, when do we normally use that word? Why is he calling her pretty rather than beautiful? That kind of thing. Um, similarly, why is she excited? Um, what is it about the situation that, like when we associate something with excitement, what kind of age group are we thinking about? Those kinds of things. So copy down the quotations, um, choose a keyword and zoom in on it to explore the connotations. Pausing the video now. So this is a key term, the younger generation. So needs to copy down the information in the red box. Um, the key term, the younger generation, refers to the younger characters in the play who see things differently. So they are moving away from capitalism and starting to believe that we should take responsibility for everyone. Socialism. Um, so we need to copy that down into your exercise books. And it's important to think about which characters in particular in the younger generation symbolise that shift from capitalism to socialism. Um, contextually, they would be representing the young people who after World War One saw the huge mistakes that their parents generation had made. There was a lot of deaths in World War One due to the type of fighting um, and also a lot of money lost. The country was ruined essentially after World War One and the younger generation would kind of think that that was needless ruin, that they didn't need to go to war. Um, and they voted in a Labour government, they move, um, voted in Clement Attlee um, because they wanted change. And these younger generation are represented by Eric and Sheila. So they are the people who would be wanting to have a more socialist system in society. Um, however, Gerald is still part of that younger generation, but he maintains his capitalist views. He's the most upper class member of the play um, and he is going to be the one that stands to lose the most, essentially, if society changes. So he is the one who is going to want to maintain his capitalist views the most. So what we are going to do now is watch the film. So there's a link in the um, information on the video as well as if you click the eye in the top right hand corner of the screen then it will bring you to the video um, and you need to watch the film from 18 minutes so that's where you got up to last lesson up to 32 minutes 30 so it's up to where Sheila says he probably already knows so just pause this video and then watch the film so this is um, some important contextual information for women in those times so if you write in your exercise book the subheading, what was life like for women in 1912? Um, and then copy down these bullet points, please. So we have that they were expected to get married and have children. Um, they were expected to have some education. However, if they were too educated, then they became known as blue stockings. Um, and people in those times believed that if a woman read too much or became too educated, um, and too intelligent then she would actually turn more masculine and become really unattractive and be unable to get married. Um, genuine thoughts. Um, the suffragettes were women who fought for women to gain the right to vote. So in 1918 women aged over 30 who were homeowners and married um, were allowed to vote. Up until that point women were like they didn't think that women were interested in politics and business um, and it was expected that if you were um, that you would kind of influence your husband's vote and that your husband would vote on your behalf rather than you voting for yourself and your own opinion 
um, and consequently women were unlikely to express opinions about politics or business as it would risk becoming unattractive to men. Um, you have to bear in mind just how important it was for a woman to get married in those times. Um, very similar to the Merchant of Venice, uh, women depended on men for money and income. Um, and it wasn't really until World War I when the men were fighting in war and positions in, of responsibility in jobs became available for women. The large amount of jobs for women were very low paid um, and only really kind of jobs that you would take out of necessity rather than actually wanting to do that job or have a career in that job. Um, and because they were like fixated on getting married, there was a lot of focus on how attractive women were, so they should be pretty. Um, and that key quote and that key word, that adjective, which keeps being repeated, when you talk about something being pretty, it's this idea that they're attractive, but they're not obsessed with their looks. So they're not beautiful, um, because that implies some sort of, like, too pretty almost. Um, but if they are pretty, then they'd be nice to look at without being too nice to look at and being kind of a threat of them cheating for other men, that kind of thing. Um, what we are going to do now is read the pages... 16, so when Burling says, is staring at the inspector, what did you say your name was, inspector? Up to the end of Act 1. So you need to click on the link um, either in the information box or in the top right hand corner and it will bring you to a separate video with the annotations. Copy those annotations into your own copy of the play and then return to this video to complete the activities in this lesson. So what I would like you to do now is to think about how Sheila links to the context. So as I said at the start, Parisi has deliberately set the play in 1912 and he is highlighting the differences between 1912 and 1945. And for Sheila, it's the differences for what life was like for women between 1912 and 1945. And what I would like you to do is to write down three things which would have changed for women between those times. So pause the video now write down three things that would have changed. So some potential answers that you could have had. Um, they would be expected to work more um, and they would also be expected to work within a career. They could kind of go to university and become like lawyers, doctors, teachers, etc. Uh, they would be able to vote in elections if they were over 30 and married. They'd be more involved in business. So this whole situation of Sheila and Mrs. Burling having to leave the dining room to go to the drawing room wouldn't really happen. They would have they would be able to have a voice and opinion on business um, because they would be more independent from men and therefore able to have lives of their own. So we're looking at quite drastic changes for women between 1912 and 1945.